Good morning. morning. Welcome to First Christian Church on this beautiful fall morning, maybe. Uh, The announcements are we would appreciate everyone, especially first-time visitors, to sign the register and pass it down the pew and then pass it back. And uh, we need help with the soundboard. And prayer shows will meet on Tuesday, September the 12th at 1 p.m. Choir rehearsals meet this Thursday, September 14th at 6.30 p.m. The Church Wiener Roast will be held Sunday, September 17th at 4 p.m. at the Chatterton's home. Please bring a dish to pass. Put something in the dish before you bring it. Somebody asked me, well, what's an empty dish going to do? Uh, So there will be hot dogs and buns and drinks and table service will be furnished. Contact Bob or Karen if you have any questions. The elders retreat is Saturday, September 23rd. And it's time to sign up for a fellowship for October, November, and December. Sign up sheet is in the parlor across from the kitchen. And I think I have call on Patty for an announcement. Good morning. Uh, You probably noticed that there was a table just outside of the door going into the parlor. And that table has on it some multicolored sheets that we have been working on for some time now. Uh, On August 22nd, a group of people uh, met together and we have created what is called the Interfaith Alliance of Macomb. I am. And the Interfaith Alliance is holding an event on Tuesday, September 19th from 6.30 to 8.30. As far as we know, in Chandler Park, we have not received the official confirmation on this yet, but so far as we know, that's what it is. What we are asking today and next Sunday is that you uh, take a copy of the affirmation that's going to be made available to people. What this is, this is in reaction to Charlottesville And it's a statement of inclusivity and acceptance of diversity within our community here in Macomb. As you well know, we are a group of people in this community that cover many, many faiths, many, many traditions, many, many cultures. And as a result of that, what we've tried to do is to come up with something that includes everyone. And we ask our church to be supportive of that by signing an affirmation statement, and that's out there for you to sign, Uh, If you are in agreement, there's certainly no pressure for anyone to do that, but we we feel that the more people we have who sign on, the greater the triumph of goodness in this community will be. So there are are copies for you to take away if you want to look at it before you sign the affirmation, that's fine, we'll have it here next Sunday as well, or you can come to the park on the 19th and sign it there. But we encourage all of you to look at it, and we encourage you to come for the activity which will be very family friendly. We'll have art, we'll have music. The Interfaith Jazz Choir is going to be singing. Uh, There will be a variety of things going on. So uh, please put that on your calendar and be thinking about it. Take a copy of the affirmation and uh, read read through that and ponder it this week. Thank you. Thank you, Patty. I think Bill Combe has Announcement also. Good morning. morning. You you may have noticed some new faces in the choir. It's always fun, right? Interns, would you stand up, please? You met last week Allie Hewlin on the left in the soprano section. She, again, is a music education major from the, now I'm losing this, from the Batavia area. She's, you'll see her name on the front of the bulletin as the children's choir director. In the altos, Brianna Blake. She's from Plainfield. She's a music education major and all-around good person. 
And behind her, Erin Mendenhall. Erin is from Mount Morris. Mount Zion, it was Mount something. Ruth Parks kept me out too late last night. That was it. Yes. And uh, Aaron is a music education major. Both Aaron and Brianna are sophomores. You may recognize Ethan Nueva in, in the back, Nueva. He has been with us before, two years ago. And his major is undeclared. Or his major is general studies. General studies. He plays the horn and is a singer. And we're happy to have him back. I've asked all four of these young people to stand at the stairs at the end of the service so you can greet them then. Thank you. And now let's prepare our hearts and minds for services as we listen to the prelude. If you're able, please stand for the call to worship. <clears throat> there is much we do not understand. Yet God is with us in our confusion and doubt. There is much in this world that we fear. And God surrounds us and protects our arms. There is much about God we do not know. So we stand in awe of the unjudgmental of God that is beside us, surrounding us, and shining light into the darkness. And our first hymn is page 634, To Us All, To Every Nation.
Now will you join me with the invocation. Holy God, we stand before you this day ready to worship and sing praises. Fill this space with your Holy Spirit and fill us with your grace as we lift our voices in celebration of you. Children's moment, will the children please come down? Good morning. Can you hear me? Good morning. Who knows what today's sermon topic is? You didn't read up ahead of time? <laughs> it's called stumbled. Stumbled? Stumbling? It's something about stumbling. Have you guys ever stumbled? Do you know what that is? No? I stumbled a couple of weeks ago going down some stairs and I sprained my ankle. I stumbled, I missed a step on my way down and it did not feel good. Have you guys ever tripped on a sidewalk or tripped at school? Yeah? You tumbled down a mountain? The, exactly. So when we stumble, when we trip and maybe fall, or maybe you have a friend who trips and falls and stumbles. What do you do? Hmm. You call for help? Absolutely. You help them get up. So if you're with someone who stumbles, you help them get up, right? So the day that I stumbled and hurt my ankle, I was here by myself, but I had to call Kelly to get help. And uh, there were two people almost immediately here to help. And it was so good to have someone there to offer assistance. So what do you suppose God would call us to do if we saw someone who stumbled? Hmm. Help him out. Good job, Drew. So, yeah, we're, we're called to help people out who need us. Sometimes... You don't even have to, someone doesn't have to ask, Drew, could you please help someone? Sometimes we just do it, right? Does that make sense? So if we see someone in need, if we see someone stumble, we're called to help. We're called to share our faith with other people. And sometimes that means maybe we're not talking about God, but we're just offering assistance, sharing God's love. Does that make sense? Okay. Let's go ahead and pray. Gracious God, we just thank you for being in our lives and helping us to learn how to help other people when someone stumbles. Help us to always share your love and grace with other people, even when it's not asked upon us. In your name we pray. Amen. I forgot to put my microphone on. Good morning. Good morning. Did you know what the sermon topic was before the children's moment? No. I'm not sure I did either today, so it's all right. I'm just joking. I really did. I would share with you the concerns and celebrations of our congregation as we know them at this time. An aunt to Patty Jones has had successful um, brain surgery in Texas, and so we celebrate with that. Um, Janelle Shabel and Gina Montgomery have been in Peoria um, since last night. Uh, they had to be admitted into ICU 
there was a blood clot in Gina's port line and there was, that was causing some difficulties and she was needing a blood transfusion and platelets. And so um, she continues with her recovery and with her um, process with her cancer, but we pray that all is going well at this point and they are supposedly headed home today. And so we give thanks for that. Folks who have been on our hearts and on our minds, Larry Graves, Pat Ward, Todd Randall, Stan Mercer, Grant Anderson, Paul Lesher, Bob Rutledge, and Melissa Inman. We pray for our students who have been in school now for a few weeks, but we hope that all is going well for our college students and for our high school students. And um, a reminder that there is a youth parent meeting tonight at five o'clock. This is to lay out what's gonna happen for the course of the next two semesters as much as we can do today. So if you are a youth or a parent, you should be at church tonight at five. This is for grades three and above. So third grade and above should meet today in the fellowship hall at five. This morning, we will also be in prayer for those who are suffering from hurricanes. We know that there are also others in the world that are suffering from fires and earthquakes. Um, surely you've heard of the earthquake in Mexico and the fires out west, but there's even more than that going on in the world. But we will do our part today to help those who have been in the path of um, Harvey and today, Irma. We pray for many in our church who have family members. So the sellers have family members who might be affected um, Luann Harriman's daughter and son-in-law are in the path, and Patty Jones's son had to evacuate and is in Alabama. We pray for these three families. We pray for more who may have friends or um, family. Jill Jones from our congregation is now living in Florida, and so we know that, that there are folks that we need to keep in our minds. Today, we will have two passes with our offering trays. The first pass will be for Week of Compassion. Week of Compassion is part of our church, um, part of our denomination, and 100% of the funds raised by the Week of Compassion this morning from our church will go directly to um, hurricane relief. I am friends with a woman who happens to be the area minister in South Texas, and she has delivered eight checks over the course of the last week and a half for folks who have been affected by Harvey. One of my best friends is a minister at a large church in Houston, and um, just yesterday, his church's website said, it was a good day for our minister to not be in the church because we found a snake in the ceiling above his desk. It's not just the water, my friends. It's not just the water. He said he was very glad to not be at church yesterday also. Um, anyway, so we will keep um, doing what we can. Prayer and money seems to be the best thing right now. And so let us provide this day. So the first pass today will be for the Week of Compassion. If you put money in that plate today, that's what that will go for 100%. We will send that check as soon as we can. For our second pass, that will be our normal offering to help us keep on the lights and to um, take care of our staff and to provide ministry in this community, like our partnership with the Interfaith Alliance of Macomb and different things like that, which you are more aware of than I am because you participate in those ministries. It is good to be in this place today, to come to take care of our own selves, to participate in partnership with others in this world and help take care of their souls. So let us come into this moment, knowing that we have not mentioned every concern or every celebration, that there um, is more, something maybe even too private to say out loud but we know that we can bring that to our God. So as we begin our morning prayer, let's begin with just a moment of silence. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we mention so many to you this day. The names 
of people we've been praying for for days and weeks and some for months. For those who are in need of your healing hand this day, God, we ask that they find you. For those who need to know that they are not alone, God, we ask that they can, in some real way this day, from something incredibly spiritual and intimate, or in a moment where someone lends a hand, may those who need you find you. We pray this day, God, for those who have been in the paths of hurricane in days gone by. We pray for those who are in the path of Irma now. It seems like not enough to pray. It seems like too little. It seems like we are useless. But we offer our words and our hearts. We lift our words and our hearts to you. Because God, we know that if any good will come from this moment, if there's any good that has come from Harvey, that it's because of you. That you work in the hearts of those who can help others, that you work in the hearts of those who can provide funds for those in need, that you put people in right places at right times. This day with our offerings, may we be with the right people at the right time. This day with our prayers, may we make our wishes known to you. You tell us, God, you tell us to tell you what we need. We need a break. We need to know of your presence. We need to know that you are the best friend that we can have. So we come in to worship this day. To settle in your spirit. To find our way again. We confess we are not perfect people, God. We confess that we have stumbled from time to time. We confess that maybe we've made it hard for others to come to know you. But this day, God, we ask for your help, for your strength, for your courage, and even your faith. Create in us new hearts. Remind us of your good gifts. May we find your love and grace. And on this day, may it be enough. We offer our prayers in the name of Jesus who sat with his disciples and taught them to pray. Hear again these words as we repeat them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's, today's anthem was chosen specially for these times. But we have hurricanes and flooding and fire and threats of violence, anniversaries of violent acts. Sometimes we get comfort from scripture. The anthem called One Thing this morning is based on Psalm 27. I'd like to read it to you. It says this. See how contemporary this is. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked advance against me to devour me, it is my enemies and my foes who will stumble and fall. Though an army besiege me, my heart will not fear. 
though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze on the beauty of the Lord and seek him in his temple. For the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent and set me high upon a rock. With my head, then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. His sacred tent I will sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. One thing.
And the people said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for that prayer and music this day, choir. Bill, good to have you back. Our scripture today comes from the 18th chapter of the Gospel of Matthew, verses 6 through 7. It's printed in the bulletin if you'd like to read along. You can just listen if that's what you'd like to do, but let us hear the word. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were fastened around your neck and you were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe to the world because of stumbling blocks. Occasions for stumbling are bound to come, but woe to the one by whom the stumbling block Comes. May God add blessing and understanding to the hearing of this word this day. I don't know about you and your family. Maybe you're kinder to each other than we were. But if you were walking across the room and the carpet stubbed your toe and you stumbled just a little, it would be more than likely someone would say, way to go, Grace. If you stumbled more than once or twice in a day, you were called Grace for about a week. How's it going, Grace? Watch that little man in the tile. Our football coaches used to say that to us. Watch that little man in the field. He'll tackle you every time. Grace, that's what we would call each other. That's not very grace-filled, is it? It's not very nice. It's not very kind. It's definitely not gracious. Today, we will hear about stumbling, and I think we will wonder about grace, because Jesus is kind of serious about what he says, huh? Woe to you that stumbles, woe to you that causes anybody else to stumble. It says some pretty serious things. Stumbling, by the way, to trip, to momentarily fall. almost lose your balance. I want us to focus on those words momentarily and almost. Hang on to that. Momentarily and almost. The passage that we've read today is actually part of a larger passage. It starts with um, the idea of stumbling. It ends with the idea of stumbling and we've picked up the heart of that passage. But the disciples ask a question. Here in the Gospel of Matthew, in the 18th chapter, starting in the first or second verse, they come to Jesus and they say, how do we know which of the 12 of us is the greatest? And Jesus goes immediately to stumbling. They want to know how it is that they can share their faith in great ways with those who believe in Jesus, and they want to know which of them is going to do it the best. And Jesus says, maybe you're stumbling. Maybe you're focused on the wrong thing. And if you're focused on the wrong thing, because if you're looking for glory and honor, then you shouldn't be with me. But if you're looking for glory and honor, you could cause some people to stumble. He goes and he gets a little child and brings the child into the midst of the disciples and says to them, if you do anything that causes this little one, this weaker member of the family, this new believer, if you do anything to cause this one to stumble, well, woe to you. Woe to you. It gets pretty graphic about what might happen to someone, talking about a millstone. Has anybody here ever ground their own flour? I have never ground my own flour, but a millstone, because I looked it up, because I needed to know exactly what a millstone was, two little things that you use to ground the wheat into flour. But that's not what Jesus is talking about. Jesus is talking about more commercial grade, Jesus is talking about going to the factory where they do that. And in that day and time, the factory included donkeys. And the donkeys would pull the millstones because there was so much wheat and they were making so much flour. They would pull the millstones with ropes to get it ground up well. 
This is the kind of millstone that Jesus is saying. He's not just saying, go to your kitchen and grab that and go jump in the ocean. He's saying, go to the factory. Go to the place where they have real millstones. You cause someone to stumble, that's the millstone that you need to take and go jump in the ocean. This is a pretty critical passage. Critical in the sense that Jesus is critical about those who may not try to live the path. Critical to his own disciples who are more worried about glory and honor and greatness than serving God. What causes us to stumble? A missed payment for a credit card or a car? Someone treating us rude and therefore we start to treat someone else rude? Not hearing from someone being in a fight with a spouse or a friend or a teacher? Missing someone? I've heard someone say that they're a little more self-conscious when they drive because they have one of those first Christian car stickers and they don't want people to know that they're angry at them because they don't think that's a very good representation of the church. I say we all should get a car sticker. (laughs) Who knows? Who knows? Eugene Boring, Adam Hamilton, anybody who has ever been a person of faith says, we're going to stumble. We're going to mess up. Even that word we don't like so much, we're going to sin. In my opinion, it's what we do with that. You see, we can stumble and we can right ourselves, or we can stumble and we can stumble again. And we can stumble again. And we can stumble again, always thinking that we're going to get back on the path. This is what Adam Hamilton says in his book. He also says that there are six words that every person of faith needs to live by. I am sorry. I forgive you. He says we can't know wholeness, we can't know happiness until we provide forgiveness to others and we seek forgiveness to those from whom we need it. And that starts with God. He says that forgiveness is actually God's answer to those moments in our lives when we sin or when we stumble, that that is from God. Because God loves us more than we can know. Friends, God loves us more than we can know. And God understands that our stumbling is only momentary. It's only almost Now, there is hitting rock bottom. That's a different day. That's a different story. We're only talking about stumbling. If I stumble in the midst of strong friends, well, it's not as big a deal, right? Because you can move on. You can continue going. You might even lend a hand to lift me up. I felt that from you, and I have seen you extend that hand to each other. But should I stumble in the presence of someone who might be new to faith? Or if I stumble in front of someone who is looking for a reason not to believe? who is just looking for a reason to say that faith is stupid 
and that there is no God? Well, that stumbling takes on a different reaction. Stumbling is going to happen, but it's only momentary. It's only an almost. Too often, we hold ourselves deep down. We think of ourselves as no good. I have stumbled. I have stumbled more than once. How, God, can you love me? How, friend, can you love me? How, spouse, can you love me? How can I love myself? Forgiveness is God's answer. Hamilton also writes these words. In seeking and finding forgiveness, we experience pardon and restoration, which offer a new beginning, and we return to the path where we've always wanted to be anyway. We come back to the life we always wanted anyway. We come back to God. Brian Christopher Coulter, in his book, The Holy, talks about the difference between farms in America and farms in Africa. He says that in America, we put fences on our farms so that we can keep our farm animals contained. The question becomes in America, are the farm animals inside or outside the fence? If they happen to be outside the fence, we move them back in and then the question is over. We don't have to ask it again, right? We know where the animals are. He says that in Africa, the question is never ending because the question is different. It isn't, are the farm animals inside a fence? There are no fences. So the question is, are the farm animals moving away from the farm or to the farm? And the question is continuously asked. He says that's like holiness. Not that holiness is about farm animals and being fenced in, but are we moving toward holiness or away from holiness? Would you agree that if we're moving away from holiness, we're stumbling? And if we're moving toward holiness, we're finding our path? He says that we should always be moving toward holiness. Friends, We'll stumble. But hopefully the stumble is just a blip. Be kind to yourself. Begin to show love to yourself because God is going to love you through it. And when you see others stumbling, be helpful and be loving. This is the way that we move away from stumbling and toward holiness and faithfulness. May this be our path. In the name of the Christ, amen.
as we gather around the table. Come here this day and find your rest. Come here this day and find your strength. Come here to the table this day and find forgiveness, love, and grace. For this is a table of love, and God invites us, just as Jesus sat at the table with his disciples and was present with them, God is present with us. All who call upon the name of the Christ are welcome to this table, no matter um, tradition, no matter denomination. We welcome you into this family of faith. So let us gather now. Let us turn our attention to God to recognize God's presence here at the table. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Heavenly Father, you are our awesome God. You are our uh, heavenly shepherd, and we are your sheep. You are our heavenly Father, and we are your children. You call us each by name. You gave us your son so that we might have the promise of life everlasting. Thank you for all of these wonderful blessings. And dear Lord, we ask you to be with us as we partake of this loaf, the symbol of the uh, broken body of our Savior on the cross. And as we partake of it, may we reaffirm our confession of faith to you and uh, remember to be the best uh, helpers for you that we can be. Dear Father, we pray that you will uh, help us not to want to be our own leaders, but to follow you as, easy, as you have asked us to do. Help us to help others when they have difficulties and when they stumble, and be with us when we stumble. We ask all these things in the name of our loving Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. great God of our balance. We come this day to this table, seeking your guidance to maintain the balance of our lives. In those days of hurry and stress, pausing to commune with you is a quiet, great healer for our souls. We pray from our hearts for good and for your calming voice, which leads us to the quiet understanding of what it means to be a good and faithful Christian. Bless this cup, symbolic of Jesus' shed blood. May it touch our spirits as it touches our lips. We ask it in the name of Christ. Amen. When Jesus sat at the table with his disciples, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. After the meal, he took wine and he blessed it and he poured it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my blood shed for you. Each time you eat of this bread and drink from this cup, remember me. Let us remember the one who teaches us about stumbling. Let us remember the one who teaches us about love and grace. Let us remember Jesus as we gather around this table this day.
Please remember that this first offering will go to the relief victims for the floods. And the scripture that I'm going to read, give it and it will be given to you. A good measure pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with, <coughs> for with the measure you use, it will be measured to you. The deacons will wait upon you for your offering. Will you pray with me? Father, thank you for measuring our worth and the worth of all others by the gift of your son. You bought us with your precious love. Help us to not withhold what we know we cannot keep beyond the grave. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 16, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing. It is a time to re-up to be strengthened again, to go into the world, to recommit to this faith that God has given to us, to recommit to this love that God has given to us. And so if part of your recommitment might be coming forward and joining the church, we invite you to come as we sing. But this is a time of commitment for all of us. So let us so commit as we sing.
stumbles will come, but God is constant. So my friends, go forth and be the people of faith. Our mission statement reminds us that we are to receive and to share the love of God. So go forth, having received, that we might share. In the name of the Christ, amen. Thank you.